Hey, it's Mo. I'm really excited for this fourth video out of five in our partnership with Cove about how to meet the right new people. Hardly anybody gets this right before attending one of our classes or reading The Snowball System, our book, How to Win More Business and Turn Clients into Raving Fans. If you want more on this, I'm going to give you eight amazing ideas you can put in place right away. But if you want more, Chapter 6, Lead Tactics, goes into much, much, much more detail in our book, The Snowball System. So most people have either some sporadic way or sometimes a sprint way to meet the right new people. I want you to have a systematic way, something that can be either an if this happens, then do that, or even preferably something that you can put in your calendar so that you are in control to meet the right new people to a level that even gets predictable over time. This is really important. I'm going to give you eight ways that you can build a system and then you can figure out which of these work for you. I'm going to go through these really quickly again, more in chapter six in our book, the snowball system, or there's a lot more also in our free course, winning the relationship advantage. Let's go. Number one, referrals. Referrals are the classic multi thousand year old way to meet new people. There's two ways to do it. One is this, if this, then that one's calendar driven. If this, then that every time somebody says this went great, or I really appreciate your partnership, or it was amazing how you prepared us for the board readout last Tuesday. When you get a compliment, that's a great time to ask this question. Wow, um, Phyllis, that is fantastic. Uh, and you replay back all that Phyllis did to help you be successful. So you're being truly thankful. At some point though, soon after the compliment, say, who else do you know that would benefit from, from knowing us? I love that way of asking it because if you say, do you know of someone else, that's a big chance of a no. It's hard for somebody to think of somebody right away, but you want to say, who do you know that would benefit from knowing us? You're not trying to close a deal or make a sale. You're just saying who would benefit from knowing us. And then that says there is somebody in their brain that they can think of and they'll likely pause, let them think if at worst, they're going to say, let me think about it. But at best, they might think of somebody right then and there that you should meet. That's the episodic way to do it. The calendar way of doing referrals is to plug in a time, same time every week typically, and just send off one email, 8 a.m. on Friday. Send off one email that says, uh, Joe, really have enjoyed working with you. Hey, I'm trying to create a system out of meeting the right new people that benefits everybody, including you, because I meet new people that, that you might want to meet as well. Who do you know that would benefit from knowing us? And if you just ask one a week over time, you're going to get a lot of, lot of great ideas. That's about creating a system in your calendar. Really powerful. So that's idea number one, referrals. Now I'm going to go faster through the others. Number two, forums. These are in-person events that you can plug into your calendar and make sure to do them on a periodic basis. Maybe every quarter you're going to give uh, updates on the marketplace based on your expertise and you're going to get X many people at dinner to talk about it. Plug in your calendar every single, every single X period of time. That's a forum. Our definition of those are their in-person events. So that's generally going to work for people that have a clientele that, that lives close to them. The next step, webinars. I put this one third because if you don't have people that are around you in your locale that you can meet in person, then you'd want to switch to a webinar every quarter or every six months, whatever the system is, you put it in your calendar, you work with your marketing people and you say, I am going to deliver something valuable to the marketplace. The key is to do it in a systematic fashion where what's the interval that you learn things that are interesting and how often can you do an, a webinar? You'll find that if you do it systematically as opposed to sporadically, you're going to build a following and you will find the content if you have it in your calendar. That is a webinar. Next up, email list. I think this is one that's hardly ever done with professionals. And I love our email list. You can get it at growbigplaybook.com. Every week I spend about three hours writing an article. Our audience can read in about three minutes, a tip on relationship building or business development. And I've found over time that list just grows and grows and grows and grows. There's a, a high-end broker that we work with 
uh, insurance broker and he created an email list. It started with three or four of his clients. It's now in the hundreds of people that have asked to get on his monthly digest. And he just reviews the things that he thinks are interesting that month from a, from a risk management perspective, sends it out every month. And now, now that he's got a following, it's sort of his digest of what to pay attention to. People love it and it lets him meet new people because someone forwards it to somebody else and they follow up with him and say, hey, can I get on your email list? He's like, sure. Hey, by the way, let's have a quick call and get to meet each other. It works amazingly well. Next up, value groups. I love value groups. Value groups are groups that meet on a periodic basis to solve something that's very difficult to solve. It's not gonna be solved in, in one meeting. A value group can be three or four or six or eight people that meet for dinner that can be in the hundreds of people that solve a certain thing. Things that are long-term in nature like uh, we had a client that created a, a women in the energy industry in Houston, Texas, in the United States. There aren't many women in the energy industry. Once she started that, and she just did a happy hour once a month, incredible momentum was created and everybody wanted to be a part of it. And when you create a value group, whether it's done virtually or in person, whether it's monthly, quarterly, semi-annual, whatever it is, people look to you differently, they put you up on a pedestal because you're the person who knows everybody and they start bringing them friends to want to meet you. Value groups are super cool. Again, more on chapter six in the snowball system on that, in, including a very specific way to set them up for success. Next up, we've got events. These are more one-time events, but they usually happen annually, like conferences, things like that. Figuring out what you're gonna go through and really commit to and going to the same ones every year is really important. That's where you build the momentum because you start to see some of the people, catch up with them, things like that. Next up, speaking. You can combine this or not combining with events, but if you can speak X times a year on certain topics, it's sort of the, the live version of webinars, if you will, really powerful because people put you up, to up, up on a pedestal when you're the speaker. You have magic powers, especially right after your speech, and there's specific ways to do it in a way that generates new relationships. And lastly, our eighth idea, podcast. Incredibly powerful. If you can commit to a certain cadence, one, uh, sending out an episode once a month, once a week, whatever it is, that creates the need to have a guest. And what's neat about podcasts is that when you interview somebody else, you can sort of ladder up who you can invite to your, to your podcast, maybe a, a level higher than you normally interact with because you're, you're giving them a platform, your platform, you're putting them up, up on a pedestal and that lets you really meet people that are high profile because you're gonna showcase what they know to your audience and it's incredibly powerful. In general on podcast, start with the harder to get guests because what your initial guests ask for is, hey, who's been on the show? So generally you're better off waiting a little longer and having a really great marquee event uh, or marquee get marquee guest, maybe somebody you already know or a friend of a friend. Start with somebody really great and then that makes it a lot easier to get your next guest because you don't have the downloads yet. So you want the, you want the, uh, the panache of a really marquee guest to start off with. Any of those eight things can work. Some are if this, then that. Most of those you can plug in your calendar, at least on an annual basis, and create a system for meeting the right new people. Again, more in the Snowball System, our book, more in winning the relationship advantage, our free course on relationships. Whatever you do, remember, sporadic doesn't work. Sprints are okay. Creating systems are where it's at, and you can create a system that generates the right new relationships for you. As with all these videos, we hope this one helps you help your clients succeed.